OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Uh, I'm Barry Bakin. Uh, this is video discussion prompts and other fun and easy activities for ESL classes. Uh, let me see if I can get the chat up. Uh, if you um, by any chance are not an ESL teacher, uh, go ahead and put that in the chat so I know what's uh, what's your happening what's happening. But I by the title, I'm uh, presuming that most of you are ESL uh, instructors or ESL adjacent. So um, I am uh, what's called in our division instructional technology teacher advisor, uh, which is an out of classroom position, uh, helping teachers and uh, students implement uh, and integrate technology uh, in their instruction. Uh, I've been doing this now for about five years. Uh, about 30 years uh, prior, I started out as an ESL teacher. So uh, many of my uh, projects uh, that I introduced to people over the years were are based in um, actual classroom uh, use and projects and activities that I did but um, for full disclosure, uh, I don't get a chance to practice them as much uh, nowadays with students, and uh, but I still think they're fairly valid. And I am also a OTAN subject matter expert, uh, which means that I get to uh, represent OTAN uh, at uh, trainings like these online and also in person as uh, the need arises, and I hope that, uh, you know, uh, as we move forward into the next school year, we'll have uh, more opportunities to do uh, in-person training uh, as well as hybrid training. So, oh, okay, let's see in the chat over here. Uh, we have Michael says, teach ABE, ASC at Elgin Community College, but many of his students are English language learners as well. So I hope that uh, maybe you'll pick up a few ideas uh, that are applicable for your students. Thanks for sharing that. So my goal is uh, by uh, 5.30 today, you will be able to implement several projects or activities, including video-based discussion prompts with little or no preparation. And if you stick around to the end, in fact, um, I've prepared uh, three really fun videos uh, that can be used uh, with your students. Uh, and I have loaded them uh, up into uh, the cloud in an open folder. And I'll be sharing with you a document with all those links. So when we get to that section, don't, don't worry, you'll be able to um, actually get those videos. That's why I'm saying with little or, or no preparation, you will need a little bit of preparation there to uh, copy the, uh, the video clips uh, into your own uh, devices. So anyway, let's get started. Um, I'm still a big uh, Kahoot fan. How about you guys? Is there anybody who is, has never used Kahoot? You can answer in the chat or, oh, okay. Well, there we go. We So we have a one, one I don't and one uh, love Kahoot and somebody who's a fan of the beard. The beard is uh, much wider and a lot shorter now, yes. Okay. Well, in any case, I'm still a, a big fan of using Kahoot. And um, this is like the first fun activity. Uh, that we do, uh, that I used to do uh, in uh, my classes. And uh, I would just do a Kahoot to get the students to know uh, 
the names of the other students. Uh, uh, there we go. I've got one of these little automatic lights in my office. If I am too immobile for a long enough period of time, the light goes out. Uh, so that may happen again. Okay, so uh, basically the, uh, the main idea of Kahoot, of course, is uh, you know, you see a prompt and then you have some choices and uh, it works uh, in hybrid as well as in uh, only online and only uh, in-person uh, settings. Uh, and the students then answering on their phone will see the four choices and select it. And then it's a competition. Uh, but what I would do is I would make the Kahoot I, in the first a uh, few days of class, I would start by taking uh, photos, headshots of every uh, every student uh, registered uh, in the class and um, just pretty much stand them all up in a line uh, up against the, uh, the whiteboard so it's a pretty neutral background and just take a headshot. Uh, and from that, a uh, headshot uh, or a collection of headshots, um, I would produce the Kahoot. And uh, it's really, really helpful, not just for you uh, to learn names, but for the students themselves uh, to learn the names of uh, the, the, uh, their colleagues, their classmates. Uh, and the other nice thing about it uh, that I found over the years is if you save these photos uh, in logically named folders by semester or by year, um, they come in really handy when you see that student uh, again sometime in the future and you know that person was your student, uh, but you just can't remember the name. And so sometimes it's nice to have this little archive of student photos. Uh, and the other benefit, of course, is that it's a, it's a sort of a non-threatening way to introduce your students to Kahoot. Uh, and so that they, if they haven't um, had a class where they've uh, used Kahoot, uh, then this is the way you can introduce them in a non-threatening way. It's, you know, their grades don't depend on this or anything, uh, but it's just a lot of fun. So um, I would, I would recommend uh, if you're, if you're not a Kahoot user to explore it. And of course, there's so many more things now that can be done since uh, we first started talking about Kahoot four or five years ago. Okay, so a, a great project for everybody, uh, not just ESL, of course, is food projects. Uh, I don't know how many of you watch TikToks or Instagrams or uh, Twitter postings of people and food, uh, but I think it's a very popular uh, activity. There's an, a new fellow that I've been watching. He's like a chef. And what he does is he creates... Um, he creates his own responses to people presenting food objects, and then he rates their, you know, their process and the product. And, and at the end, he says whether or not he'd eat it. And uh, it's, he's, he's got a great sense of humor. Uh, and of course, he's very knowledgeable. So uh, it's just been real enjoyable watching him. Uh, but in any case, how about a show of hands or, you know, uh, in the chat? How many of you enjoy posting pictures when you're at a restaurant or when you're eating of uh, different food that you that you like that you are eating? Anybody guilty? Okay, Gloria Garcia does it. All right, and I wager if if you know if you're doing it, your students are also doing it. It's very it seems to be very very popular. So what can we do with that in terms of an activity? other than just posting the, the pictures? Well, um, first thing is add level appropriate writing tasks. Uh, this particular one uh, was in one of our uh, parenting classes. Uh, it's actually, uh, the format here is our learning management system. But you can see that the teacher has set out the uh, the steps for the project, uh, planning a special dinner uh, with a given budget. Uh, and there's a little bit of a, 
you know, a vocabulary uh, lesson there about budget. Uh, and then uh, there's, it's suggested that, you know, using the internet, finding a flyer or a weekly ad or a search. So, you know, the example given is a safe way, weekly ads. Uh, and then, you know, the person has to write about that particular uh, meal. So this is a this is a real example. Uh, one student uh, talking about the special dinner that uh, he's going to prepare for his wife, and where he's going to get the ingredients and how much it's going to be. Uh, a really nice little project. Okay, and of course you can elaborate on that uh, by having them, you know, uh, depending on you know what you what programs your students know, uh, doing something in Word, doing something in PowerPoint, uh, you know, giving a presentation about the, the, the recipes. Again, uh, really unlimited and really, really fun and popular for students. Uh, once you've introduced some real basic uh, PowerPoint or uh, Google Slides, uh, steps you know really you don't need much more than uh inserting how to insert a picture how to insert text uh and how to give the slideshow um you then can convert the whatever the project idea that you're working on uh into a presentation uh on powerpoint or in google and um this one uh was most likely uh, an EL civics type activity about safety, uh, but, you know, good information to have. Uh, and, you know, student created projects. Um, you have a couple of options with this. You can have everybody work on the same topic, or uh, you can divide up topics or let students choose topics. So uh, again, basic PowerPoint uh, is not that complicated. Uh, and I found even that uh, lower level students uh, are familiar with some of these basic steps of, you know, how to insert a text box with some words and how, how to insert uh, an image. So uh, we do use a, a learning management system. The one that we use in, uh, in our district is uh, Schoology, but this is applicable uh, to all uh, levels. Um, but in this case, uh, you know, the, the idea was for, or the project was uh, in an IET class, uh, in a parenting class, uh, to take pictures of the children's uh, school spaces uh, during the time of uh, COVID, especially when everybody was working from home, uh, but the same topic would apply uh, in any uh, situation as well. Uh, even now, do you, you know do parents have a a nice space in the house uh, for students to feel that this is where they do their work? Uh, but then notice uh, the interaction that happens uh, between the teacher uh, once the students have posted the pictures then um, what happens is the, the teacher can interact by starting the discussions. And another similar uh, project, uh, this one, uh, were about how they, uh, you know, organize the supplies at home. Uh, and again, you know, making use of students' phones as cameras, uh, as source material for writing uh, and discussion. And again, uh, a, you know, you can adapt th these ideas to, you know, virtually any uh, level uh, and uh, topic. Uh, this was actually one of our uh, you know, the IET courses, it was pre-cosmetology in this particular project. Uh, you know, in the past, 
maybe they would be doing uh, some of these things in the classroom. So the, uh, you know, the work area, the client preparation, set up of supplies, you know, all that used to be done only in the classroom. And so the teacher would walk around, obviously, and, and check uh, the setup of supplies and things and see that everything was ready to go. Uh, you know, when, when we were in 100% uh, online instruction, this, they could still do the project, but there were more uh, photos involved. So you can sort of see there uh, the different projects uh, in sequence uh, that the students had to do. And then the next thing would be, uh, you know, the students are creating these uh, series of photos. Uh, and then the teacher would, of course, be, be looking through those. But in terms of ESL, this idea of a sequence of photos uh, is really, really uh, a fun project uh, that you can do with the whole class. Uh, let me just check here. Um, and I, I started to call them scrambled uh, PowerPoint puzzles. So uh, let me open up uh one that i've got prepared let me find it first and uh can everybody see that yes am i am i still sharing that or did i unshare it was i see uh somebody anna said yes but that was yes to the question are you am i still sharing it I yeah we so. see the coffee great okay so this is actually one that i made but i'm going to, i want to use it because uh, it's basic enough and it really demonstrates um how it works okay so this is just a basic presentation um what i've done is uh on the left side okay our uh the slides to the steps of making coffee and what i did do was i put uh i labeled it with letters uh you don't necessarily have to do that uh for this particular you could leave it without it uh and then students have to uh describe what they're looking at as they talk about the uh the pictures but one of the things that a lot of people don't don't know is that under the view option, I mean, most of us, if we do work with PowerPoint, pretty much most of the time use this layout where the work area is in the center. And then on the left side, you have the uh, slides. Uh, but there's an, there are other ways to view them. And the one that I like for this uh, exercise is called slide sorter view. So what I would do is I would, have them look at it in slides sorter view, okay? So, uh, and then uh, you can enlarge that, of course. Uh, let me see if I can uh, enlarge it. We'll get the zoom. We'll make it a little bit larger. Okay, that, that may have been a little bit too much, but but you can see it, okay? And then the idea uh is to look at this and um give me some ideas about what is first in this sequence of events let me there, bring it down just a little bit so we got all of them okay How, how's that can everybody pretty much see all of the uh different slides so um the point is uh, these are, you can click and move them. So I can click on this one and move it to anywhere uh, I want in the order. Okay. So the idea would be, uh, you know, either as a discussion first, uh, you know, as a whole group activity, uh, you know, let's work together and see if we can come up with the most logical order uh, for these slides. So this is the time where um, you can either speak or shout out 
or write in the chat. So um, it looks like uh, somebody has already gone ahead and said H. They feel slide H is first. So we're looking at H. Okay. Does anybody have any uh, different ideas? Should I go with H? Nobody has an opinion? Okay, so we have at least two people who said H is first. So let me go ahead and move H up into the first location. And maybe the rationale might be uh, this teacher uh, is thinking about having uh, having some coffee. Okay, uh, and I, I will also say that it's possible that there may be more than one correct answer. And that becomes part of the discussion. Okay, what would be next? Yes, uh, I think that's uh, Anna saying she's tired and, you know, if it's a typical teacher, yeah, probably. Okay, so we have a couple people, it looks like, uh, saying C is next. So uh, C, uh, and then, you know, you can, you can ask the students to elaborate, what do they see in the picture? So again, it depends on the level uh, that you're working with. So it sounds logical to me. You've done a good job so far. Let's grab it, click it and drag it, okay. All right, so that's C. So she, she looks like she goes to the cabinet to get the supplies. Can we get some? Okay, a couple of people are suggesting G. So yeah, several people. Okay, so G would be uh, putting the the coffee uh, into the coffee maker, and then in any case, you can obviously what happens now. So after you do a demonstration of how it works, okay, there are different ways to roll this out in the class. Um, one way you could distribute the uh, the sequence in you know the original order. And then the students, as part of their task, would be to uh, save it in the correct order. So, so you distribute it like this, and then they have to return it to you. They have to save it and return it to you uh, in the correct order with their, you know, with their rationale about uh, why uh, they think. Uh, it's this particular order. Um, then the next thing would be uh, you assign them uh, a particular, uh, you know, you assign them that they take the pictures. So, you know, if they've already done, uh, you know, something like this, they already have the pictures, uh, they could make their own. So I do have a sample. Uh, Let's see. Of that. So this is an actual student created uh, slideshow um, as well. Um, and and th there could be a lot of variations uh, on this. Uh, the, the other nice thing that they can do with this um, afterward, you know, they can create the order then they could create a scrambled version, uh, you know, so that th they can run the game for the other people in the class. And then they become the teacher working from their own uh, project. But the other nice thing about um, the power, you know, PowerPoint is that they can record their voice. Now wait at least another minute for your nails to dry. Finally, enjoy your new glamorous nails. 
then file. Did it come through or not really? Yes, we heard it. Ah, okay, great. Thank you. So again, you know, the ability of PowerPoint to record, to have, stu to have students record their voices is, you know, so beneficial in uh, the ESL context. You know, you really can drill down and, you know, make sure that each, uh, each sentence is, you know, has good, clear uh, pronunciation. So this can be a really fun project. Um, you do sort of, it may be a good idea to caution students about how many pictures they should include because, uh, you know, this can, when you really break things down into steps, uh, it uh, can be quite lengthy. Okay, so another activity that I found uh, was a lot of fun for students. I used to call it find English in real life. And basically what we would do, uh, it was, you know, this is something that you, if you establish at the uh, beginning of the semester, then your students are uh, cued in and are aware that at any time during the semester, this can be an activity that they can participate in. And basically, it's like a treasure hunt where every time you introduce a new topic or you talk about something, uh, their goal is to try to find an example of that uh, in real life. And this one was uh, good enough that uh, when the student brought it in, I actually uh, turned it into a worksheet uh, because of the, uh, the nature of you know, what happened. So for some reason, and I don't, I'm not sure you know, how it started other than the fact that we were working on contractions, um, you know, it came up with ain't. And, you know, and I did the usual explanation. Well, in academic, uh, you know, so-called good English, uh, we probably wouldn't be using ain't. But, um, you know, in more casual or colloquial, colloquial English, you may find it and you may hear it in songs. And, and wouldn't you know it, sure enough, the student that next morning came in with this uh, boondocks um, card comic strip, and I'm sure you're familiar or you've heard of Boondocks, but right there he said, "Look, I found it. You ain't that young either." Um, and so then, you know, uh, student gets recognized for finding uh, the English that we talked about in class in real life. You can print out a certificate nowadays. Of course, you could like give a badge or something, uh, you know, for your in your learning management system. But this is an activity that can uh, take place throughout the semester. Uh, here's another uh, examples. Again, other student finds where uh, they brought these things in. This obviously, uh, we were studying passive voice. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of passive voice out there in the world. Uh, and sure enough, uh, students found them very easily. Uh, a tap card is required. Uh, dog defecation must be removed. Uh, and this that's really nice too, because it even has the buy, by owners. And so uh, very, very easy to uh, turn all of those photos that they bring in or they email you into a, a nice little slideshow. Uh, but again, this is something that can uh, happen throughout the, the semester. Okay, so um, the next project, uh, I like for quite a few reasons, but one of them is also students get to learn a little bit uh, about some of the other uh, functions that can find in Publisher or PowerPoint, depending on which uh, programs you have. Uh, not as many people have Publisher uh, easily available uh, anymore. Uh, but it can actually be done in PowerPoint. Um, and, but I will say that uh, the most recent versions of uh, PowerPoint and Publisher, they still do this, but um, it's a little, bit, a little bit more difficult to manipulate. So um, let me just show a few examples. So that one obviously is coffee. That one is baby. 
team, uh, a little bit more conceptual, the idea of uh, friendship. And, uh, well, there you go. So let me just uh, get an idea. Are you, How many of you are aware that you can insert pictures into words? Just give me a shout out. So hopefully this will be at least one brand new thing for many of you today. Uh, and uh, really fun for lower levels because you're not dealing with a lot of language. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at how this can be done. I'm, just, I'm looking for the uh, original, but I guess, you know what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and we'll start from scratch with a new PowerPoint. Okay, so again, basically, this is your typical uh, PowerPoint slide on the left side. You know, you see all the slides that you would create. The center is your work area. For this, um, under... Um, Let's see, where were we from? I want to get rid of the... Uh, what I want to do is get rid of these little things here. Huh? Uh, layout. Okay, so under layout, I just choose a blank slide. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use... Uh, word art and okay so under your insert menu you look for word art and just pick one with a lot of area okay so you have your word art box and what you're going to do is you're going to type your word okay so let's say we pick a word. I'm probably use all capital letters. Okay, uh, sunflowers. And then the next thing that I do is I highlight the text. Okay, and we need to do find the the menu item that says text effects. Okay, actually I think I probably want to. Uh, we'll do it under 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 the home menu instead. Okay, um, highlight text effects. So under got to find the right one. Um, so sorry. Let's see. I just did it this morning. Let's see. Let's look at it again. Home. Oh, maybe it's under the word art. Insert word art. Here we go. Not sure why I don't see it right now. It was there just this morning. Not smart. Or... Well, if somebody else can help me with that, that would be Shape, great. Isn't it shape fill? Well, before that, there before that, there's one that we got we want gotta get it into the word art. Let me start from the beginning. Okay, we'll try it again. Insert word art. And I pick one. I don't want that. Okay, so we'll write the word. I 
I've got summer on my mind, but really what I was writing was sunflowers. Okay, so let's see. It's not... You had just right clicked on that and then we saw the effect. Right, but um, I'm looking for a, a special one that says text effects and it wasn't that. It's not the format. There's another menu item. We may have to come back to this. It's not that one. No. Hmm. Barry? Yeah. Um, after you've typed in your text, select the word art text, yeah. navigate drawing tools, format word art styles, click text effects. Drawing tools. Drawing tools, format word art styles. Over here on the right. I'd rather go ahead and skip it. In the, uh, okay. There we go shape format that's it text effects and there you see transform that's the, that's the command i'm looking for again this is a even though i review this before i do it i don't do it enough with students okay so uh sorry for that transform and see then you have all of these great shapes see that And what I suggest is you try to get one that provides as much coverage as you can of letters. And then you can make it larger. There we go. That looks pretty good. So that was the that's the text effects and you get to this transform. Okay, then now what we want to do is we want to use the 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 idea of the pictures okay so now we can go to our color of the text and under the colors oh, not there either let's see it's not there either this is where we want to fill it in Let's see. Okay, there we go. The format. Now it's a shape. So we use this one, picture fill. And then we can insert a picture from an online one, even though this may be the background. Let's see what happens. Pick one with a lot of sunflowers. Okay, so that did the opposite of what I intended. So it's not the shape, it's the, let's undo that. It's the letters. So home. Maybe I have to highlight it first. Again, I'm not sure. I'm not seeing the menu that I want. It's not the shape, it's the, the text. Picture. Again, that's giving me the background, I think. Yeah, it's it's giving me the background instead of the uh, the text. Maybe if I click on text options, I don't want to take up more of your time. 
But the idea is you, you should be able to get it into the actual text. I'll, I'll come back to that later. Um, let's insert it. But one thing I did learn, uh, if you insert a text box, and you can really do the same thing. Just make your letters really large. It's a little bit too big. Okay. Okay, so now when we go to the colors, hopefully it will be there. Again, I'm not sure why. It's... I'm so sorry. So this is the text option. Picture fill. This... There we go. Look, it went ahead. See, there's the sunflowers. Again, so it has to be in the text fill, and there's the picture, and there's the sunflowers. So it's an option, something probably, uh, you know, you can uh, experiment with and see if you can get it to work a little bit better than I've demonstrated. Okay, let's see, Adrian says something like this, and I'm not sure what he means. Uh, Oh, he found uh, some instructions. Basically, yes. Thank you for that. Okay. In any case, let's move on. You probably want to practice with that. So... The section that I've always really had fun with uh, for ESL is the what I call video clip predictions. What do you think? Uh, and I've already separated this out uh, into sections. So uh, this particular one only has three, and uh, they really do work best if you uh, edit the clips to only what you want to see. I used to try uh, running the whole clip and stopping it, but I, I was just, it was always so inaccurate. So I finally used a very basic uh, video editor uh, and started editing to see only the portion of the clip. So uh, let's all do this together. Um, let me make sure that the uh, sound is working. I think the sound should still be uh, on. So let me know if you hear the sound. Uh, did you get the sound on that? Yes. Okay, great. So you saw what happened. So now, um, you know, in the classroom, you could, you know, separate into uh, groups and online setting. You could go into breakout rooms. But your the idea is, as a group, um, I need you to give me some predictions about what you think will happen next. So obviously, um, uh, you know, there's also a lot of good room for practicing present continuous tense. You know, what is what do you see the the person doing, uh, and then moving into you know future tense. What do you think will happen? So uh, we can just work as a whole group. Um, why don't you put in the chat your suggestions about what you think will happen next? Okay, so some of the ideas are starting to populate. Uh, 
he's going to steal the car okay uh he's going to be locked out of his car let's see if we can get a a, a few more Oh my, he's going to deadlift the car. I, I think that means pick it up. Okay, he's going to drive away. Uh, someone is going to come out of the car. Uh, he's going to buy this kind of car in the future. All those are great. Okay. All right. Okay, so now what I would do is uh, go to the next one and play that. Okay, did any of you expect that? Really surprising, right? But nevertheless, you know, then you can, you know, what happened? You get a lot of good vocabulary about, oh gosh, the monster and the lake and, you know, grabbed him. But after you do all of that discussion, again, we get back to what do you think will happen next? And let, let's get some ideas. See, now you know how absurd this thing, you know, the this particular video is. So you can make your uh, predictions a little bit wilder if you want. Show that again, because it's so fun. Okay, so what do we got? We've got, um, it, it will spit him out. He's going to swim out and throw the cardboard into the water. The monster will put him back. Okay, um, let's see. J H, Jessica. Um, in that, in your sentence there, you're saying that the monster will put the the person back. Oh, look what Adrian said. Adrian said, the, the arms will put the cardboard up for the next victim. Well, let's see who was right. Oh, let's, let's give Adrian a big round of applause. Very good, Adrian. Yeah, the, the actual name when I first found this clip uh, was actually called bait car but it's, it's some sort of commercial so uh, I when I edited it I trimmed off that part of it so it wouldn't be a clue but um, so what do you think you know your students do you think your students would get a kick out of that and how, how many of you think your students would ever guess that second step. It's so surprising. So surprising. Okay, so that's one. Uh, the bait car. Let's take a look at another one. Uh, this one is called uh, Thanksgiving Turkey. So appropriate, obviously, in November. Save it for November. All right, you saw it. What do you think will happen next? Okay, Adrian, first out of the gate with the turkey is going to attack her. Okay, see, now you guys are sort of uh, thinking about wild and crazy things because you saw that first one. 
Oh, the turkey will suck her head in. Oh my gosh, too many alien movies. Uh, fly out the window. She will turn into a turkey. These are great suggestions. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at the next one. Okay, so that's what happened. What do you think will happen next? Okay, uh, the turkey will run away. Okay, through the the magic of CGI, the turkey is going to walk out. The turkey will jump back into the sink. She's going to wrestle the turkey on the floor. Okay, let's watch. Now, that was a short one. Okay, so now what's next? She will pick it up and place it back in the sink. Okay. Oh, there was, she'll go to McDonald's for dinner. Okay. <laughs> Any other uh, suggestions? She's going into the sink with the turkey. Oh, I like that. Okay, let's let's check. Every time I see that, I still chuckle. What do you think? Also fun? Again, you know, really good way to talk about things and get a lot of vocabulary, you know, uh, into it. Okay, so the, the final one I have. Is called making a commercial for Samsung washing machine. Okay. Oh, so I, I saw a little comment there uh, before we go to the washing machine. Uh, Christy says, the moral of the story is the husband should help. Yes, if he wasn't outside there minding his own business, watering the lawn, nothing would have happened. Okay, so again, you know, your ESL teachers, you, you know, might want to first, you know, elicit ideas from the students about what they're looking at in the picture. Um so let's see. Let's get to play the first one. Just putting the feeder hose into the back of the machine. We're getting water directly from the lake over there. Is there a blanket or get, some, get like a warm? Okay, guys. Guys, we've got company. Okay, let me play that again. Just putting the feeder hose into the back of the machine. We're getting water directly from the lake over there. Is there a blanket or get, some, get like a warm? Okay, guys, guys, we've got company. Okay, so what do you think will happen next? The last thing he said was, we've got company. Okay, so uh, Gloria, if you've seen this, then let's refrain. Okay, <laughs> don't don't spoil it. Okay, so uh, Bigfoot, a bear, a bear will approach. Okay, well, let's see the next one. We've got company. Let's just move away from them. It's a bear. It's a bear. It's fine. We're fine. Just calmly walk over here. We're fine. You too, sir. Now, please. What's he doing? What's he doing? Let's just give the bear a minute. He's going to move on. Just let the bear be. 
Okay. We'll go right through this because it seems like many of you have a fairly good idea. But again, your students won't. Okay. Um. All right. Sitting in my chair. Sitting in my chair. So again, a, a lot of little fun clips here. Sitting in my chair. Sitting in my chair. <laughs> Okay. That is insane. It got that clean on a cold cycle. Okay, can we go back to work now, Mr. Oh. Ranger? The bear is now leaving. Okay, gang. It's, good for, it's clear for us to go back to set. Oh, it's a polar bear. All you wanted to do is use the washing machine. So there you go. You, you pretty much got it right for those of you uh, but it's fun too obviously and you know total imagination i mean you're never going to guess that the bear is going to juggle the fish but notice of course it's not just drawing it's washing he changes from being a dirty brownish looking bear to a, a beautiful uh white coat so uh, so in any case, what I've done is I, I have these um, three clips. Now, let me see. Maybe I can, uh, while we're still all uh, here, let me see if I can find that file and just drop it into the chat. And then you can open it and see um, If it works for you, let me let me find it. So that should open as a Word doc. All right. And then why don't one or two of you, you know, just pick different clips and see if it opens for you uh on your on your device oh good so what you would do is you know create a folder on your device uh where you're going to store all these and and you know pretty much download them in order and uh you know have them available uh and you know make use of them uh when you need it and i've already um done a, that really nice uh video uh work for you uh so that's most of the work with these but of course you know there are so many funny videos with unexpected endings out there uh that you know it's like an unlimited resource i'm sure that you can find uh other videos or you've already seen other videos uh that will you know be real suitable uh you know for 
use uh, in this situation. I did want to share uh, one one app that's pretty helpful. Uh, let me get let me go back to the share. Um, one, two, three apps.com. And if I'm not correct, I think I learned about this from Melinda Holt. However, regardless of the source, um, it's an, you know, you can go to the web page, but if you have Chrome, they also have like a Chrome browser extension and you can get the menu right from within your Chrome browser, but very simple online only uh you know tool for uh working with video very very simple trimming the video cropping it rotating it flipping it and then you can see up at the top they also have audio tools pdf tools uh other types of uh converters so uh if you find a, a video uh that has that you know a twist to the ending a surprise ending uh, you can use this uh, on your own to trim it and, um, you know, present it to your students. And if, um, and if you do do that, then, you know, it would be great. Share, share it with me. I'll put my uh, email address in the chat there because, uh, you know, these are so fun. They're, they're really, uh, really great. Okay, so um, there is one uh, final website that's been around for quite some time uh, that I'll introduce you to. Uh, really a lot of fun for uh, ESL. Um, it's called makebeliefscomics.com. Okay, there's so much stuff here in this website since uh, the gentleman who created it uh, created it many years ago uh, that, you know, you can really spend quite a lot of time on it. But basically the idea is working within comics, uh, getting your students to uh, use these comics to practice their English. Okay. Uh, so let me just show you the one example of uh, where. Oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. So again, basically what you have is characters and then speech balloons. Okay, and the students will. Uh, choose a character, choose the 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 language, and produce uh produce a comic. Uh, and it's so very flexible because in your directions to the students, you can say, you know what, uh, we've been studying uh, past tense today or this week. Please um, incorporate some past tense uh, into the into your comic, or you know, we we were working with uh, simple compound and complex sentences. So in your comic strip, please make sure you include at least one simple sentence, one compound sentence, and one uh, complex sentence. So basically, you know, the way it works is uh, under the create comics or The, the interface is very uh, pretty simple. Uh, once you show students uh, what to do, um, this is the number of panels. Like the default is three, but uh, one. But you can say, okay, I'm going to have 
the third panel, the second panel, the first panel. You can add more panels, make it four panels. Okay. Uh, so then you give it a name. And you put your name. Okay. And then you have all these characters. So you scroll through the characters, and there's so many now, you know, with a, a really nice variety. Okay, and then you're given some options. All right. Oh, okay. You know what? I was in the third panel. Let me go ahead and click on the first panel and we'll we'll get something. Okay. And then you have some tools here. Move lets you move the person around or the character around. Scale lets you make that smaller or or bigger. Bring to front as if you have more than one character, you change the position. Flip flips the character and then delete. So once you get the character, okay and you can you know put more than one character as well all right oh sorry i went i clicked on the wrong thing we we have to get the little uh sp speech balloon So, and also there's also the backgrounds, but you get your little thought balloons or speech balloons. So you have different ones. And then when you click on it, you get the words. And then you can move it into location, see? And then you might say, you know what, that balloon is a little bit too big. So you, you get a smaller one. Try that. Oh, so that looks a lot better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that one and move this one up into place. So basically, that's the idea. And what you do is you build your comic. And again, the same type of idea where you just tell your students, you know, see if you can include something that we've uh, studied. And then they have the print, share, or email. Uh, if you don't create a little account, uh, it doesn't get saved. But what you would do is you just basically uh, email it to yourself or you have your students print it out or email it uh, and then you can you know put it up in the classroom or display it on the web page but it's really a, a a great little website they have so many other uh, so many topics now uh, I'm not going to go into everything but you know other types of writing prompts that you could use uh, et cetera et cetera et cetera so that's called Make Beliefs Comics. The only thing that uh, over the years that um, I wish you'd done a little bit differently was somehow change the name so that it's a little bit, to me, it sounds a little bit uh, weird, Make Beliefs uh, Comics. But uh, I was fortunate to meet uh, Bill Zimmerman at a, a TESOL conference years, maybe like 10 years ago, uh, a really nice gentleman. But anyway, it's a really fun activity. Uh, students making their their comics, printing them out. Uh, there you go.
so that brings me to the end of the activities that um, I wanted to share with you today. Uh, I hope that uh, we met the objective that at least you'll be able to implement one or two activities or projects uh, right away in your classes. If not tomorrow, then next week.